Hello everyone, so let's just continue with our discussion on the force of interest. So let's just take a look at what the force of interest is for compound interest. So we call that the accumulation function for compound interest is equal to 1 plus i to the power of t. So also we call the definition of force of interest is equal to the derivative of the accumulation function divided by the accumulation function. So now we need to find this term. So how do we do it? So notice that this term here is an exponential function. And if you've forgotten the formula uh, for the derivative of an exponential function, we can derive it. So remember, we take the natural logarithm of both sides, because otherwise it's quite impossible to just uh, differentiate this term. So the natural log of 1 plus i to the power of t. And we call this is a, a logarithm. So we can take the t away from here and put it down here. Now let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So using the chain rule, this, this term becomes 1 over a t times a prime of t. We just, we're just using the chain rule. On this side, this is t multiplied by a constant. So uh, taking the derivative, uh, we get rid of the t and we get natural log 1 plus i. So we see that a prime of t is equal to a t times natural log 1 plus i. So going back to the force of interest, we see that uh, it's equal to a t natural log 1 plus i divided by a t. And quite obviously, you can see that this is equal to natural log 1 plus i. So we see something very interesting. So for uh, compound interest, the force of interest is actually a constant. So some people just omit the t and just write the force of interest is equal to natural log 1 plus i. And so we see that for compound interest, the force of interest is always a constant. And some people rearrange this formula and write it as 1 plus i is equal to e to the power of delta. And now these two form, uh, it's both of these are the same. And usually, uh, in a lot of the cases, you'll they'll give you uh, right, either one of these terms, or you'll have to find the other one using this formula. And also, notice that 1 plus i is equal to this term, right? And Notice that the accumulation function of compound interest is equal to 1 plus i to the power of t. So we can actually write this as e to the power of delta t. And if you notice that when we did the differentiation of this term, we actually had to go through quite a bit of trouble. So just notice here, we actually have to go through several steps to get the derivative. But if we work with this one, it's going to be much easier because it's a exponential term for e. And as you know, the integration and differentiation with these terms is generally easier. So in cases where you have to do a lot of manipulation with compound interest, and you'll get, uh, you'll see a lot of these cases in your life contingencies and some more complicated financial mathematic cases. So when it comes to that, it's much easier to work with this term. So this is actually a very important result. So the key takeaway from this lesson is just remember that the accumulation function for uh, compound interest can be written as this. And remember that 1 plus i is equal to e to the power of delta. So this is the key takeaway of this lesson. And, uh, so that is all for, to for today's video. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.